Hello everybody and welcome to Journal Auto YouTube channel. Today we will talk about the Ford engine, the well-known 1.0 EcoBoost petrol engine, turbocharged. And uh, if you are wondering what am I doing in my Opel, or if you are watching this from UK in my Vauxhall, if we are talking about a Ford engine. But uh, treat this like an intro because this is what it is, an intro. Uh, I would like to give you some details about this engine before uh, driving it and before doing the proper review. So please bear with me uh, because it's important to have an overview before watching how this engine behaves and what is my opinion about it. This engine was produced starting with April 2012. So this engine has already 10 years on the market because I'm filming this in 2022. And um, the four models that received this, uh, this engine were Fiesta, uh, B-Max, C-Max, Grand C-Max, Focus, uh, also EcoSport, Puma, but in the newest version with mild hybrid, Transit Courier and Mondeo. Yep, Mondeo. We will talk about this a little bit later. In the first year, this engine come, came with a 100 horsepower version and 125 horsepower version. In this review, I will have the 125 horsepower version. And later were added a 120 horsepower version, a 140 horsepower version. And starting with 2019, a mild hybrid version that you can find it on Puma, for example, with 155 horsepower. Also, this engine received a naturally aspirated version with 65 and 80 horsepower that can be found on Fiesta. The engine itself was made in Cologne, Germany, in Romania, my home country, in Craiova, and also in China, in Chongqing. The engine that I will uh, be reviewing in this video you will see that it was made in Cologne in July 2017. The more powerful versions with 100 and 125 horsepower are developing 170 newton meters power of torque starting with 1400 rpm. So very low, you have the maximum uh, torque power at a very low uh, torque and it goes up to 4500 rpm and in the overboost mode it can go up to 200 newton meters power of torque while the version with 140 horsepower it goes up to 210 newton meters power of torque the engine block of this engine is made up of cast iron and this helps the engine to warm up 50% faster than an engine that has an aluminum block, just that it is heavier and this engine weighs around 97 kilos. From 2012 to 2017, the engine received the prize of International Engine of the Year for the, the, for the, categ for the category of engines under 1.0. So uh, it received this prize for six years in a row, just that for the 2017, the prize were, was received for the, for the engine that was reconfigured. So in 2017, the engine was reconfigured and the production started in uh, 2018. The focus in this review, it's made, uh, it was registered at the end of 2017, but as I said, the engine is made in July 2017, so it is not the reconfigured engine, but the first generation of this engine, if we, if we can call it like that. For the reconfigured version of the engine, uh, the engine got a new flywheel. It was a dual mass flywheel and a vibration damping clutch disc but for the manual transmission only that help neutralize engine oscillation while running on two cylinders. And now because I mentioned about Mondeo, I think this is a bit exaggerated to put this engine on Mondeo. Um, I barely accept it on Focus. It works as you will see in this review, but in, on Mondeo it's just too much because Mondeo in the hatchback version weights 14 
55 kilos, while the estate version weighs 14 76 kilos so if you, if you take your family with you and put also some luggage luggage which means at least 200 kilos more this 1.0 engine uh, must ca uh, must carry yeah, around 1650 or 1700 kilos which is way too much this is exaggerated so i will not accept such an engine on mondeo i will barely accept it on a focus um, and also, there were, in the first two years of production, there were issues with this engine because, uh, more exactly, there were issue, issues with the cooling system. The, liquid, the cooling liquid was draining up and um, air was getting inside and the sensor inside, um, inside there was not detecting this and this led to engine damage and also image damage for Ford. Ben Ford uh, resolved this problem only in 2014. So if you are looking for an engine for an engine like this, just look for a car that has this engine after 2014. So thus being said, let's go to the review to see how this engine looks, to see how it drives, and stay with me until the end for the conclusions. This is the 1.0 turbo petrol engine. What it's very curious for me, it's that this engine doesn't have a cover here, like most of the cars. Uh, this is how it looks, nothing special. But what I like here, you see, it says when it was produced. 13 July 2017 in Cologne engine plant, in Cologne, Germany. So this engine is not that, it's not produced in Romania like other engines in my home country, where we have a Ford factory. But this one is produced in Germany because we can consider the European Ford's German cars because they are being developed and some of them even produced in Germany. And now let's go for a drive and stay with me until the end for the conclusions. So we are now driving the 1.0 turbo petrol engine EcoBoost of Ford Focus that develops 125 horsepower. Uh, I am skeptical of these small engines on quite big cars. I am, after driving this engine, I'm still skeptical, let's say semi-skeptical, but it's better than I thought. I mean, look, now I'm in the fourth gear, I have 70 kilometers per hour. You will see on the screen this transformed in miles per hour, the conversion, and I have around 2200 uh, RPM. And the car is not noisy. I mean, the but what it's weird that is that I'm in the fourth gear and the car is asking me to change in the sixth gear. That's weird. No, I'm not doing that. I will change in the fifth gear. Um, in the city, you feel like you have enough power, you know, because the car is around 1200, 1300, somewhere there, ki um, kilograms heavy. And uh, the, the, the engine has 125 horsepower. So uh, the ratio between the weight of the car and the power it's quite good and that's why you don't feel that this car is underpowered we are now two persons in this car but of course if you load it a lot with let's say four people and luggage and so on you might feel it a little bit underpowered but this this car is very good for driving inside the city for driving around the city and it's very good also for driving on the highway. I tested it earlier and um, at 130 kilometers per hour, the fuel consumption was around 7.4 liters uh, per 100 kilometers. It was a little, it was quite noisy, not a little bit. It was quite noisy, but bearable. I have driven on highways noisier cars than this. So it is bearable. And it's quite comfortable. The cameraman says that uh, it doesn't feel very noisy. It was in the back. In the front, it, so it was a little bit more noisier. But just look at 80 kilometers per hour in the fifth gear, 2000 RPM, less than five liters per 100 kilometers fuel consumption. And the car feels uh, quite um, silent around. If you want to downshift and have power, forget it. With this engine, forget it. I mean, if you want to drive this car sporty and like in the rally, you don't have enough resources, even if it has 125 horsepower. Sadly, there are no resources, but this is 
understandable because after all it's a 1.0 liter engine that it's um, that has a turbine it has a turbo um, on it you saw now that I wanted to accelerate and it doesn't have a very fast acceleration it's a quite pleasant surprise this engine I mean it's not that bad as I would thought it would be and uh, let's see how it will behave in the future because this trend with the downsizing uh, it's only several years old some engines were not that reliable others were so we will see in the future how they will behave because people were very mad when these engines were launched this happens in Europe because of the emission norms of the European Union until now the engineers did quite a good job but of course if you have if you load this car a lot the fuel consumption consumption will be will be quite big this car is uh, very silent not noisy at all in the city at lower speed speeds and it's that silent that I'm I found myself forgetting to change from the second gear to third because you know usually when you st when you are in the lower gear let's say the second gear and the car goes 60 kilometers per hour you can feel it like screaming not the case here I, I was in the second gear with almost 60 kilometers per hour and I was like what gear I'm in man so yeah at, lo at lower speeds it's a it's a quiet car and this is what I like now for city driving this is a very nice car and uh, as I said this engine is good for all I mean it's perfect for city it's perfect for uh, the country roads around the city and if you want to take it to highways it can do it a little bit noisier but it can do it so in the city it has an enough power more than enough just that I was expecting with this turbo to sprint for example I'm in the second gear I push the acceleration it it goes but I was expecting like a naturally aspirated engine to you know in the case of a naturally aspirated engine petrol when you accelerate it responds immediately this one feels like it has a turbo lag even if it's not that big you can feel it you accelerate and it doesn't respond immediately like in a naturally aspirated petrol engine it works more like a diesel because now all, all diesels have turbo not like in the past when they were without a turbo in the way it behaves it behaves more like a diesel this engine than like a petrol engine but in the same time in the city it has the quietness of a petrol engine what are the conclusions so regarding the engine I was skeptical I'm still not convinced I'm semi-skeptical but Focus offers plenty of engines so if you like this car but also drive a lot just look for a diesel 1.5 diesel it will be more than enough for you if you want more power look for power, more powerful petrol engines but if you drive mainly in the city and you don't go too often on highways or outside the city I think you can consider very well this 1.0 EcoBoost engine because it's a quite powerful engine even if it's not fast you can easily go outside the city whenever you have these needs 